Today, we're gonna to talk about Nike Running 2019. Now that the ZoomFly 3 and the Vaporfly Next% Percent have been released in the United States as of July 11th, the entire Nike running line has now hit the market. And so I felt like it would be a good time to go over kind of what each of these shoes does and what they're good for. Now, there's a lot of shoes to cover. I'm mainly gonna limit it to kind of the four that I would consider kind of the pillars of Nike running, but I will mention kind of the rest of the shoes that I can talk about that I have personal experience with. I'll also post links uh, in the description of this video to all my other reviews of the other shoes. So if you wanna look at any one of those shoes more specifically, you can do that. You can kind of use this as a reference or as kind of a jumping off point. So the first thing that I'll talk about is the Pegasus 36. Now the Pegasus is Nike's daily trainer. It's good at pretty much everything. And it's the kind of shoe, if someone comes to me and says, I wanna get into running, what should I get? And they haven't really had any experience with anything before, or they have, but they don't remember what they run in. I'll usually start people off with the Pegasus and whatever is new for that year. Uh, a lot of times uh, the previous year's Pegasus is also pretty heavily discounted. And so something that I also get questions about a lot is what about this shoe, which a lot of the knockdown version shoes that you might see at some of the retail outlets or the discount outlets. I usually steer people away from those and just say, get the last year's version of some of the kind of flagship shoes. And I definitely consider the Pegasus to be a flagship. It's a staple. I've run in a bunch of these shoes over the years, different versions, different years, uh, multiple of the same one in the same year on some occasions as well. And what you have here is a pretty standard upper with Kushlan midsole uh, foam with a zoom air pocket that's full length that helps provide a little bit of extra kind of springiness. You got a nice full coverage outsole that provides plenty of grip. So it is kind of a great all around shoe, whether you're running mostly on pavement or a little bit on grass or not like a full on hard trail, but if it's dirt roads some gravel roads, this is a shoe that can handle most of the running from most of the runners for most of the things that they wanna run for. And that's kind of what I would say is the Pegasus 36. Now the next shoe that I'll talk about is the Pegasus Turbo. Now last year it was the first year that the Turbo came out and they didn't call it the Turbo, they called it the Pegasus 35 Turbo. In other words, a turbo version of the Pegasus from last year. This year they're not calling it the Pegasus 36 Turbo, they're calling it the Pegasus Turbo 2. I think it makes more sense to talk about it that way because while it's kind of like the Pegasus in a lot of ways, it's very different and I like to use it for a lot of different things. The upper, this one is a little bit more race oriented. It's a little bit thinner, not as structured, a little bit more breathable though, and a lot more lightweight. The midsole is uh, a combination of Nike's React Foam and the Zoomex Foam. The React Foam is a little bit more bouncy. I like to think of it as kind of like rubbery, uh, but not in a heavy kind of way. And the Zoomex Foam, I like to think of as being very soft and comfortable. And so the two together, uh, generally lead for a nice and snappy ride. And so a lot of the things that you're gonna run the Pegasus for, uh, I think that you can use the Pegasus Turbo for as well. But the only thing that I don't think it does a great job of is kind of some of those low and slow days when you're trying to extend your mileage. So if you're running farther than you usually run, like you're a long run on Saturday, um, and you're not gonna run as fast, I think the Pegasus Turbo might not be the best choice for that uh, because it's gonna want you to run a little bit faster than kind of a slower pace. The things that I like it for are shorter, faster days. Now, I think the next shoe that I'll talk about will be the Vaporfly Next Percent. This is the cream of the crop for Nike this year. All of their technology, their best stuff is going into this shoe. It's definitely reflected in the price. It's a very expensive shoe, although the price seems to have come down to $250 in the United States, so that's good to see. Uh, but what we have on the upper is Vapor Weave, which is a new kind of upper that we've seen in some of the running shoes. Um, we may have seen iterations of it or prior versions if it's some upper in some other shoes in the past, but this is the first time they're calling it Vapor Weave. It's intended to be lightweight, strong, but also uh, resistant to taking on any water weight. In the midsole, we have 
all Zoom X foam, so it's really nice and soft, but also uh, a little bit bouncy as well. And this is, seems to be like the bounciest of the vapor flies that I've ever run in. And there's also a carbon fiber plate, which is there. It's a rigid piece of carbon fiber that when you compress it by stepping down, it returns back to its original shape and that feels like a push off sensation that this shoe gives you this is what's going to be on the feet of all of nike's elite racers this year and especially since it seems like inventory seems to be pretty solid so far this summer now that it's released in the us i think you're going to see it on a lot of non-elite runners feet as well uh, on the outsole we have just a little bit of rubber coming the covering the forefoot then you have the exposed zoom x foam and then two color matched little strips of rubber on um, the outside. And the reason why I jumped from the Turbo to the Vaporfly next is because then when we talk about the Zoomfly 3, I think it makes a little bit more sense when you're looking at these two shoes together. So the Zoomfly 3 is, one way to think of it is kind of like the knockdown version of the Vaporfly next percent, which is $250. This one starts out at 160. You're seeing a lot of the visual similarities and that's intentional. And you're seeing a lot of material similarities as well, at least in terms of the upper. In the upper, we have more of that vapor weave material, although there's a little bit more kind of stuff in the upper here to make it suitable for not just racing. And I know a lot of people will be racing in this shoe come fall, but also for your longer, harder workouts as well. Uh, in the midsole, instead of Zoom X, we swap that out for the React Foam that I mentioned earlier in the Turbo. The React Foam is a nice and bouncy material, but there's also a carbon fiber plate in here as well, so you still get that strong push-off racer type feeling. The outsole looks pretty similar, although there are some notable differences, but it's pretty similar in concept to what we saw in the Vaporfly Next Percent, where you got rubber in the midfoot, forefoot, and then nothing in the arch, so you have exposed uh, midsole foam and then two strips of rubber a little bit more rubber here than we saw in the vapor flight next percent so this is something that i would use for my fast days uh, it does not like to go slowly it does not like low and slow days it wants to be pushed hard it wants to push you hard uh, and so what i would like it for is my longer faster days now you might say, well, the Pegasus Turbo is something that you mentioned for something that you want on faster days. And the Zoom Fly 3 is something that I want for faster days. The way that I think about it is if you want a fast shoe for fast short stuff, I generally like this. Although I've taken Pegasus Turbos in 20 mile runs and I've seen people run marathons in them. But personally for me, I like it for short fast stuff. For the Zoom Flies generally, and for this year's Zoom Fly 3 as well, I like it for my longer fast stuff. So my longer tempo days. So like a big tough workout like that where you're gonna be pushing hard towards the end of a long distance. That's where I like the Zoom Fly 3. Last year I raced uh, the Chicago Half Marathon in the Zoom Fly Flyknit, and I just absolutely loved it for that distance. I think that it is that shoe's sweet spot, uh, that half marathon distance. But again, it's something that I've been seeing a lot of people run marathons in, 20 mile runs in, uh, and enjoying it for a wider variety of things. But that's what I like it for. So those are kind of the four pillars in my mind of Nike running. Now there's some other shoes that you guys might have some questions about and those are the ones that I have here. So here's what I have and I'll look kind of go through from a slower to faster progression on these as well. So on the farthest end, uh, Nike I don't think really has a max cushion shoe. I think this is the closest thing that they have to it. It's the Vomero 14. It's a little bit bigger, it's a little bit heavier. It's a lot like the Pegasus, but I would say Pegasus is more like the sedan and this is like the grand touring version so a lot of the similar dna but it feels a lot different uh, the outsole looks somewhat similar similar but it has a big kind of guide channel to help you with your uh, stride and your foot strike but the midsole is different as well in which this is all react midsole uh, here so it's uh, nice and springy but there's still also a full length zoom air pocket in this shoe as well. And so that's something that's really interesting and I think kind of a predictor of where some of the other Nike shoes might be going. I'm not sure, I don't, I don't have any firm information one way or the other. That's just what I'm suspecting and kind of hoping because I do really like this Vomero. I love it for low and slow distance. I love it for really long runs. I've tried taking it on faster stuff, trying to pick up the pace with it. I feel like it can do faster pace stuff if you're really pushing it, but it doesn't like changes in tempo. 
very much. So if you're going out low and slow, it likes to stay low and slow. It's a set it and forget it kind of shoe, uh, but it's really easy to put the miles in on this shoe. And in terms of durability, this is probably one of the most durable shoes that I've ever seen Nike running put out. And this has over 140 miles in it. And it, other than some scuffs and scrapes, it looks like it's pretty brand new and it feels that way too. The next thing that I'll talk about, which a lot of you have asked questions about or have seen or maybe have experienced, is the Epic React. Now this is the Epic React 2. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this color. I don't like blue shoes. That aside, and I know I got it very dirty. This is a shoe that has all React. That's all that there is on the midsole. Uh, in terms of the outsole, there's just a little few patches of rubber. Uh, it looks like it might not be enough and it looks like all this might kind of wear out really fast, but it's an extremely durable shoe. React Foam is extremely resilient and it holds up to a beating really well. It's surprising. It's like uh, a miracle foam uh, as far as I can tell. But this is a nice, relatively light shoe. I think that this works as a really great daily trainer. I feel like for a lot of the things that I might like the Pegasus 36 for, I also really like the Epic React for. And so the use cases are very similar, but the feel on this one is a little bit more kind of chill, a little bit more relaxed. You can still go fast in it, but in terms of the overall kind of feel, in terms of the stance and whether it feels like more of like an aggressive shoe, this one is a little bit more relaxed in my mind, but it's just as versatile as I think the Pegasus 36 is. Now, the thing that I think is the closest to the Pegasus 36, and I don't have it with me anymore to show you, is the Odyssey React Flyknit that I ran in. I don't know if that was this year or not. It was over the winter. I think it was this calendar year. Uh, but the Odyssey React Flyknit 2, uh, I think is uh, an incredible shoe. It feels a lot like the Epic React. Uh, some would say it's kind of like the knockdown version of the Epic React, but I would say it's a little bit different than that. It, the Odyssey React for me was almost exactly in feel like the Pegasus 36, except it was React Foam versus Cushlon and the Zoom Air Pocket. And so some people don't like the kind of springy sensation of the Zoom Air Pocket. And if you don't, but you otherwise like the Pegasus, I'd highly recommend the Odyssey React Flyknit. Now the last shoe that I'll talk about uh, is the Zoom Streak 7, and this is a short distance racer. So a lot of times when I talk about the Zoom Fly, when I talk about the Vapor Fly Next or the Turbo, uh, people are asking me, can I race a 5K or a 10K with those? And I generally say you probably can, but it's not what I would pick. What I would pick is the Zoom Streak 7. I love this shoe. It's really lightweight. Uh, the upper is extremely minimal and it's almost kind of old school. And in my mind, it represents the divergence that kind of Nike has undergone uh, in the last couple of years, where this is more like the direction that their shoes used to take before they started incorporating React Foam or Zoom X or carbon fiber plates. But this is still a shoe that's continually being updated. This is the new one for 2019. It has Phylon, which is a different kind of midsole material. Phylon is just like super bouncy. For me, it feels like I'm running on a tennis ball the way it's so bouncy. Uh, it just feels great to run on, but this is definitely a, a racing shoe or a very, very fast and short distance shoe because it's not the most cushioned of materials. There's also a TPU shank that's in here and you can kind of see it. It's that red thing that's in there. Uh, it functions very similarly in concept to the carbon fiber plates that are in the Vaporfly and in the Zoomfly. And in terms of when your foot hits the ground and it deforms that shank, it wants to go back to its original shape. And so when it does that, it releases energy that propels you forward. It does the same thing. So for the 5K, uh, for an 8K, I think I raced an 8K in this earlier this year. Uh, this is just a fantastic shoe to run in uh, for, for road racing. Uh, I really like it. And I think that this summer, as I, I, I keep meaning to hit the track and do some speed work, hopefully next week I'll be able to start doing some of that. Work's been kind of crazy. But for the track, when I go to the track and on the track, this is the shoe that I'm going to be wearing because it's stripped down. It is uh, the, the least between me and the surface that I'm running on. So when I want to go really fast, when I want to go short distances, this is the shoe that I'm going to be reaching for. So that's kind of my take on the Nike line. I'm sure a lot of you guys will disagree. Uh, I welcome that. We could talk about that in the comments too. But if you have any questions about any of these shoes, or want me to compare kind of more of them directly head to head, or if you're not sure which one to get, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys down there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?